Good day to you this day of your time. How are you all? <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Thank you once again for the co-creation of this interaction. Each and every time you allow us to interact with each and every one of you and all of you together, it is a great gift for us that allows us to experience through all of you many more facets of the multidimensional crystal of creation. So we thank you for that gift. This transmission has been titled the 135711 download. The idea being that this will be a kind of a shorthand template for you to be able to call upon the main principles in metaphysics so that as you move through life, you'll be able to remember this simple formula, this simple idea that can take you right into the deeper principles in a moment's notice once you understand each and every one of them and use this idea of this template, you can have this guidance tool through life at any time you face a challenge and require remembering what it is that you may be able to do at that moment that will propel you forward in the most positive and creative way. So first and foremost, the idea begins with understanding that, of course, as has been said many times for thousands of years on your planet, everything is one thing. It is the idea of what we call the third law. The one is the all, the all are the one. You, us, everything within existence are reflections of one intelligence, one existence, one self-awareness. The idea of the one has different aspects to it. One aspect is that which is homogenous, unbroken, has no sense of itself whatsoever, no self-awareness, no experience. It is just existence pure and simple. But within existence, there is this idea of that which knows itself, that that which is self-aware, which is consciousness. The idea of self-awareness requires that there be the concept of an other than self by comparison in order to know that there is the self. So the unbroken one doesn't have a concept of an other. It is literally one thing. And therefore, without a reflection, it is not self-aware except for that aspect of it that is, that creates in its own reflection everything you understand to exist within creation. So by having this split of reflection within the one, where suddenly there is this concept of what is not the one, what is the other within the one, then there is this dynamic that is created that creates the explosion of existence in all of its forms. But from that one is everything. And once you understand that there is this dynamic of one and not the one, and the other and not the other, and the self, then you have immediately not a polarity, but a trinity. Because there is always a balance point in the center between two polarities. So you instantly jump from one to three, not to two. You always have the balance point in the center. This is what is meant by some of your religious texts when they talk about a trinity. They have interpreted it in certain ways that are human terms, but the idea is simply more fundamental than the way it is presented in many of your religions. It is simply that there always has to be a middle point between what you experience as duality, what you experience as polarity, what you experience as opposites. And that is a triangle which is the most solid, stable structure and is the underlying template of physical reality. Triangles and tetrahedrons form the underlying template of what you experience mathematically and energetically as your physical reality projection in consciousness. The idea, therefore, is that once you have this sense of self by creating a sense of an other than self and create the trinity of the balance point between the two polarities, you instantly develop and expand into the idea of the structure of existence, the nature of existence that then can perpetuate everything you experience from that point forward as reflections of all that is. 
This leads to the idea of the five, what we have called the five laws, which are as follows. You exist. There is nothing you can do to change that. Everything is here and now. There is nothing you can do to change that. The one is all, the all are one, as we have said, there is nothing you can do to change that. What you put out is what you get back, there is nothing you can do to change that. And the fifth law is everything changes, except the laws. There is nothing you can do to change that. <laughs> but the idea of everything changing is that the only thing that everything changing can change into is not changing, which becomes the laws that never change. It's a circle, it's a cycle, it's a self-perpetuating loop. This doesn't change, this doesn't change, this doesn't change, this doesn't change, this changes into that which doesn't change, doesn't change, doesn't change, doesn't change, and everything changes except it changes into that which doesn't change, doesn't change, doesn't change, you get the point. So it creates this cycle, and that is actually a description of the structure of existence. The structure of existence never changes in that sense fundamentally. What changes is your perspective and your experience of the structure. That's how creation expands, because you are always seeing the single moment of now, the single point of here, from new perspectives. What you consider to be different places and what you consider to be different times, different moments, are actually the same place and the same moment, but from different perspectives, different angles. And this goes on and on and on in an ever-expanding spiral, and it never, ever ends. So you can have an infinite number of experiences that are constantly shifting and constantly changing as your perspective and definition of yourself changes, but you never change the structure. That is a fundamental underlying basis for everything you experience. And if you can remember the underlying structure, then you will always have a foundation to stand on, no matter what challenges you face in life. Now, as you continue to expand from the idea of the one and the three and the five and understand the structure and nature of existence, now you come into this idea you call the projection or the dream of physical reality. And I remind you once again, Non-physicalness, in a sense, is your natural state. I'll just say the spirit realm, for lack of a better term, is your natural state. You never leave it. That's where you live. That's where you exist. It's where you are. In whatever you want to call that dimension, spirit, higher dimension, doesn't matter. That's your natural state. Right here, right now, isness, existence itself. But the idea is that you are dreaming that you have left that state. That's what physical reality is. You are in that state, dreaming that you're not in that state. Therefore, you create this framework called space-time. So you can experience a process of change, a process of growth. So you can have different perspectives and expand creation in that way by forgetting who you are, so that through the process you can remember who you are, but from a new point of view, and that is called discovery and expansion and change. Now, when you develop this space-time framework you call the physical reality dream, then you set up parameters, in a sense guidelines, that allow you to know exactly how to navigate, how to survive, so to speak, how to perpetuate this physical reality dream. And this goes to the number seven, which are the seven basic needs in life that allow you to experience physical reality. These things are built in and they are literally what you need in order to experience your life physically to the fullest. They are in a sense ordered in the order that without them you would die the quickest. So the first thing you need in physical reality is this concept based on your collective agreement of air. Without air you will die in minutes. So breathe deeply. You are abundant with air, and you will continue to exist in physical reality because you have set that up as one of the rules of the game. You need elements that you call air in order to survive in this projection, in this dream. The second need is water. Without water, you will die relatively quickly. The next is actually not food. The next is sleep. 
Without sleep, you will probably go psychotic and die within about 11 days. <laughs> Food is next, and with liquid, with water, you can probably last quite a while. Now, please do understand, we're not talking about exceptions. We understand there are those individuals who can alter these ideas and can exist without food for quite a while, without water for a long time, but they have made an alteration that is not necessarily what you consider to be the norm. So right now we're just talking about the averages of what you need typically in your physical reality to continue to live. So after you have the air and after you have the water and after you have sleep which connects you back to the idea of your spirit self, it's like recharging your battery because this is an illusion and you have to constantly recharge your battery to perpetuate the idea that you're actually living in something real, which you're not. So you have to go back and remind yourself, all right, I'm going to create this projection again. It's not real, but I'm going to go back into this dream, which means that in a sense, when you wake up in the morning, you're actually going to sleep. And when you go to sleep, you're actually waking up. So the idea then after food is you need some kind of shelter. Now when we say shelter, we also can simply mean a compatible environment to life. It doesn't mean you have to have a house. It simply means that whatever environment you are in has to be sustainable for you to live comfortably, to give you what you need to be able to continue to survive in temperature, in whatever. The next idea is you need connection, relationship of some form. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be with people. It can be with animals, it can be with trees, it can be with rocks, it can be with the cosmos, it can be with anything, it can be with creation itself, but that relationship has to be real to you and there has to be real communication there and it has to sustain you in the sense of what you need to know that you are connected to something and getting a reflection you need from that relationship to allow you to become more and more and more of who you really truly are. The last thing you need is this creative expression to act on your passion, to be yourself and give the gifts that you have to give to truly express these ideas in life creatively, lovingly, in a sharing of some sort. These are the things you need to continue to survive. Now we understand that when we talk about the idea of relationship and we talk about the idea of expression of creativity or following your passion, it isn't necessarily something that is going to immediately end your life if you're not really doing it, but it will, for lack of a better term, kill your spirit if you're not doing it and eventually if you dampen down the energy of your spirit and don't fulfill the idea of being yourself which is after all your fundamental purpose in life is to be you as best as you can your unique self as best as you can then the idea is is that you do sort of die slowly and or you bring yourself into circumstances that allow you to die quickly or even perhaps take your own life the idea is that you do need these things. These are the fundamental needs in life. They are different from the concept of what you may say you want in life. Remember that needs are synchronistically provided to you if you're acting on your passion. You will have everything you need. You may not always get everything you want. I think you have a song by that title. <laughs> The idea is that sometimes your wants can coincide with your basic needs, but very often because of negative belief systems, fear-based belief systems, and the negative ego structure, your wants will very often not actually be representative of what you truly need. So if you're going to spend time wanting something, want what you need, because that's going to actually support you in life and allow you to live a life of fulfillment and joy. So when you have the idea then of the seven basic needs and the final one connecting now following your passion to the 11, which are the 11 elements of excitement, the 11 elements of passion that we have described to you. That is the formula of acting on your passion to the best that you can, 
with absolutely zero insistence or assumption as to what the outcome is supposed to be. Because the truth is, your physical mind has no idea what the outcome actually needs to be. Going back to needs, what you truly need. From there, you have the tools in the kit. You have the driving engine that moves you forward in life because when you're passionate, you just can't wait. You have the energy. You just can't wait to act on it. It becomes the driving engine that moves you through life. The organizing principle of synchronicity in a positive way starts to come up. Remember that there is such a thing as negative synchronicity. So these tools allow you to take advantage of positive synchronicity by allowing it to bring you situations and circumstances in the order in which you need to act on them by bringing them to you in the order that contains the highest amount of excitement and then the next highest and the next and the next and brings them to you in the order not only but at the perfect timing that you need to do them in so that what you didn't have time to do at the end of the day when you're excited about being tired and going to sleep you didn't need to do that day. It is perfectly calibrated to you to give you what you need to do that day and nothing more. Then you have the tool that is the path of least resistance. You start to flow through life. You follow your current. You understand that you have a current, that you are a current in the ocean of creation and that you know that your current knows exactly where you need to go. So go with the flow. Remember, once again, surrender is not giving up control. Surrender is surrendering to the control that's already built into your flow. So go with the flow. Don't resist. Don't swim upstream. Don't swim against the current because then you will experience the idea of trouble and difficulty and struggle and pain and strife. Because all resistance is the result of resisting your natural self. And pain comes from that. You may have been taught that it's very difficult to be your true self, but in fact, the most difficult thing is being someone you're not. So the idea is to let go, go with the flow, be who you truly are, because that's what you were made to be, that's the unique reflection you are, and everything will support you in that. And that brings us to the next tool in the kit, which is that you always receive, when you're acting on your passion, automatically, whatever form of support you actually need to be able to continue to act on your passion. Sometimes on your planet it might be money, sometimes it might be synchronicity, which is another form of abundance. Sometimes it might be a gift, which is another form of abundance. Sometimes you might be able to trade for something, which is another form of abundance. And sometimes it might just be your imagination, which is the conduit of communication for your higher mind and giving you new options, new inspirations, new ideas, new pathways, new doorways. And that is another form of abundance. And whatever form or combination of forms of abundance need to be there to allow you to continue to act on your passion will again come synchronistically to you. So don't close the doors to other forms of abundance that may actually be able to help you by assuming that only one form will work. Next you have the idea that this is a kit that is complete. It is giving you every single thing that is relevant for you in your life. And then you have also the reflective mirror tool in this kit of passion, which reveals to you anything within your belief system that might be out of alignment with your truth, with your passion, so that you can identify that negative belief, that misaligned belief, understand that it doesn't belong to you, understand that it's nonsensical, it has nothing to do with you, and let it go. Once you allow yourself to experience these tools, then you stay in a state of positiveness so that no matter what happens, you will always know, you will always derive a beneficial effect from it because it doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter what the situation was created from. It doesn't matter what anyone else's opinion in the situation is or anyone else's experience of the situation may be. If you stay in a positive state, you can only extract a positive effect from it. This is simple physics. What you put out is what you get back. Remember, that's the fourth law. So the idea is when you have an understanding of acting on your passion to the best you can with no insistence on the outcome, you activate all these tools and you have the 11 elements of excitement at your disposal. They act as an instruction manual for how life works. And even though we may sometimes go deeper into explaining how these instructions may work, there are no more instructions. This is the entire instruction manual you need for life on earth. It is that simple.
So as you go through life, allowing yourself when you face your challenges, which are the reflection of the themes that you chose to explore in transforming darkness into light, negative into positive, negative limitation into freedom, as you face the challenges that come up, remember, everything is one thing. There is a trinity, which means there is always a balance point in the center, and your point of power is in paradox. So anytime you see what appear to be opposites, and you're standing at the center of them paradoxically, you are standing in the now, you are standing in the moment, you are standing in your point of power. Remember the five laws, that you exist and you cannot stop existing, because existence is your fundamental quality. You can never become non-existent. You can change and change and change and change, but you can never become non-existent. Why? Because by definition, non-existence doesn't exist. Think about it. The idea really said another way, perhaps a little bit more poetically, is non-existence is already full of all the things that will never exist and there's no room in non-existence for the things that do exist. So you can look at it any way you wish. But remember the five laws, you exist. And then the idea that everything is here and now, which means that space and time, distance, are illusions, your illusions. Time is a side effect of your consciousness shifting through billions of different parallel versions of reality every single second. So every single second, you are new, you are zero, and you get to define yourself in this moment over and over and over and over again. And what you think of as continuity, what you think of as coming from the past, is simply your illusion that you're creating in the moment over and over and over again. Because as you become a new person every moment, you actually not only create a new future, you create a new past that goes with the person you are now. So most of you have had billions of different histories before you became the person you are right now. And if you understand that completely and utterly, you will know that no matter who you are right now, whatever you define yourself to be right now, nothing in the so-called past can ever affect you if you understand that you're the one creating the connection to that idea. It isn't something that automatically controls you in any way, shape, or form, aside from the illusion of continuity that you create every moment to make it seem as if it does. The idea again that the one is the all, the all are the one, everyone is a reflection for everyone else of things that may serve you. This is why relationship is important. This is what relationships are for. To see the reflections from others that support you in finding out in those reflections who you truly are more and more every day in every way. The idea, therefore, of what you put out is what you get back again is simple physics and the idea you call the law of attraction. But I remind you this, the true secret to the law of attraction in some sense is correct that you need to be the vibration of something to attract it if it is really relevant for you. In a sense that's true, but it's missing an essential point and that is this. Your fundamental, essential, vibrational signature frequency is already attracting every single thing that is relevant for you that you truly need in life. You don't have to learn to attract what you need. You have to stop getting in your way and keeping those things at bay. That's the difference. You need to remove all the negative fear-based beliefs that are preventing you from seeing that you are always in the key vibration, the essential frequency of attracting and manifesting everything you need. You never have to learn to attract. It's automatically built into you. If it wasn't, you couldn't have any kind of an experience at all. Think about it. If you weren't attracting, you couldn't even have the negative ones. So the idea is you're always attracting something. Be the vibration that you prefer in alignment with your truth and let go of the things that are blocking what it is that your truth is attracting and you will flow and manifest in an accelerated way. Again, fifth law, everything changes. Everything is always changing. You're always new as we always said and the idea is that you get to choose how to define yourself in any given moment, no matter what you think you were, no matter where you think you came from, no matter what anyone else tells you, you get to decide with your free will who you are. 
Then going into the idea of the basic needs again, know that again through synchronicity, everything you truly need will come to you and will support you in the continuation of your ability to act on your highest excitement so that it can continue to expand and expand and expand. And then the 11 elements of excitement open up. That toolkit works for you to your advantage because it's the instruction manual that describes how physical reality works. And that's all there is to it. This is within you. And the more you can understand these things, the more you can wrap your mind around them and know that they work, and know that it's actually a description of the structure of existence, rather than just a philosophy or an opinion, but a true observation of how things are structured, how things work, then you will be able to go beyond the concept of believing to knowing what is so. Because what you know to be true, you do. It's in your behavior. If I asked one of you to stand up and walk across the room, you wouldn't sit there and go, well, now let me think about this. Do I believe that I can do that? I'm not sure. Let me think about it a while. No, you know you can do it, so you would just do it. What you know to be true is in your behavior. You may sometimes have an intellectual comprehension of a concept, but if it's not in your actions, if it's not in your behavior, you don't really know it to be true. It's got to be, as you say, on earth in your bones. So let it sink in. Allow yourselves to know this structure inside and out, to observe it in action. By applying these principles in your life, you don't have to believe us when we tell them to you. All you need to do is apply them and see that they work. They have worked for us for millennia. They will work for you if you choose to allow them to work for you. But it's completely in your hands because it's your life, it's your choice, we have no agenda, you must listen to us at all. We do this because it is our passion and our pleasure to share this with you. But we have to respect and unconditionally love you enough to let you make your own decisions because we know that you're all eternal and infinite beings, indestructible beings, so there's no rush. There's no hurry. Lessons not learned today will be learned tomorrow, somewhere else, somehow, somewhen, some way.